In this video, I am going to find uh, area under a function. However, before I do that, let me go ahead and start with something simple. So let's consider a rectangle. All of you have seen a rectangle. For a rectangle, how do you find the area? That means how do I find this area? So let's say L is the length of the rectangle and W is the width of the rectangle then area contained inside that rectangle is length times width. Very simple. This is how we define area. So this is just a definition. There is no magic here. It's just a definition. That's how we define area for a rectangle. Now, how about a triangle? So let's say, let's make it a simple right triangle. I would like to find the area of this right triangle hmm then i can't use this formula for sure what i can do i can use a slight little trick i'm gonna add this extra thing to this triangle so let's make it a rectangle now so you can see now it's a rectangle now we know how to find the area of a rectangle it's gonna be length times width so but this triangle in interest uh, that we are interested in is going to be half of that rectangle. So area of the triangle is going to be one half times length times width. However, we don't call this length. We call it base. Base. And we don't call this width. We call it height. Okay. So this is actually one half times base times height. Now, this is a nice uh, uh, right triangle. What if you have something that's not so nicely shaped? So let's say something like this. In that case, how would you find it? So let's say I consider this as my base. The way I find height is this. Extend this line. Look at the angle opposite to the base, which is this angle, right? And from, the, from that vertex, I'm going to draw a vertical line on the base. And that is going to be my height. So now I have the base and the height for a triangle that is not a right triangle. So I could use go ahead and use this formula. And as it turns out that it works out. Now, let's go ahead and do something different. How about a circle? How do I find the area of a circle? Hmm, I am puzzled, so I don't know. How do I find the area of a circle? I can't use any of these formulas for rectangle or triangle. At least, uh, I don't know of, maybe there is a way. But I'm going to do something pizza slicing. So let's think this circle is nothing but a pizza. And I'm going to divide it into equal eight pieces. Okay, so now my first slice of pizza is going to look something like this. Okay, and the second slice of pizza is going to look like this. And the third slice of pizza is going to look like this. And the fourth slice of pizza look like this. Fifth slice is going to look like this. Sixth slice is going to look like this. Seventh slice look gonna look like, look like this, and the eighth and the last slice is gonna look like this. Now it looks kind of cute and nice. So this kind of uh, looks like a parallelogram or somewhat closer to a rectangle that I can find the area for. So by using this pizza slicing, I could approximate this circle. My approximation may not be as good but uh, there's something now if i make the pizza slices smaller my approximation will get better by the way if i make these pizza slices smaller approximation will get better how small can i make these pizza slices as small as i want technically in theory there is no limit if these pizza slices you know, 
become really, really, really small, then the approximation gets really, really, really better closer to this. Now, in the limiting case, uh, this pizza slice, if it becomes so tiny that the slice slice becomes literally zero. So this circumference, okay, this little piece uh, of pizza on the arc, it approaches, zero. let's call this length L, it approaches zero. In that case, by the way, uh, I will get actually the actual, uh, actual area of the circle. Now, think of this pizza slicing and let's take it to an arbitrary function. Let's say this is my arbitrary function f of x, okay? And I would like to find the area under the curve or under this function between the points A and B. So this is point B and this is point A. I want to find the area under the curve. Now, how do I do that? Maybe we could do something similar to pizza slicing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and try to create uh, small rectangular size slices out of this function. So let's start off with this guy. Okay, so that's that's my one rectangle, and this is my second rectangle, this is my third rectangle, and this is my fourth rectangle. So now, if we get the area of these four rectangles, we are gonna get most of the area under the curve, but it is not going to be accurate. It's going to be less than the area of the curve. Why? Because we are skipping these little triangles, right? This one, this one, and this one. But let's go ahead and uh, find that, uh, fi find the sum of those rectangles. And I'm going to call them at L4 uh, maybe. Why 4? Because there are four triangles. That's why, nothing. So my rectangle that the I have at the top, I, at the left side, I'm considering the height of that rectangle to be this, okay? So, it's going to be f of x0, or which is f of a, by the way. Point a is x0, so x0 is a, and x4 is b. Times this length, which I call delta x. By the way, all of these rectangles have the same length here, okay, which is delta x, delta x, delta x, and delta x. Now, height is f of x naught, and width is delta x. So, I'm getting the first, that gives me the first rectangle. Similarly, to find the second rectangle, I'm going to have to consider the left side um, of the rectangle as the height, which is going to be f of x1 and times the width is the same delta x. For the third one, I'm considering this height, okay, which is going to be f of x2 times delta x. And finally, the fourth rectangle, the height is going to be this right here, is going to be f of x3, okay, times delta x. Now, in doing so, you notice that I underestimated it, right? By a certain amount of, a certain amount. Now, let's go ahead and do something else slightly different. This time, I'm going to find the, let's call this left sum, and I'm going to find something called right sum. Left sum, I get by considering the left-hand side uh, height of this rectangle. Right sum, I'm going to get by considering the right side uh, of the rectangle as a height. So if that is the case, look, this is going to be my new rectangle for R4. So it's going to be f of x1. Now, this point is going to be my f of x1, which is this. My width doesn't change. Okay, this is still the same delta x for the second for the second uh, rectangle is gonna be looking like this and i'm gonna put it the arrow here put the arrow here so that it's clear it's gonna be f of x2 
times delta x. And for the third one, I'm considering this as a height, so it's gonna be plus f of x3 times delta x. And for the fourth one, is gonna be this, and it's gonna be f of x4 times delta x. Now, as you can see, by right sum, I'm overestimating by these amounts, these uh, green triangles. In the, uh, in the case of left sum, I'm underestimating by the blue uh, triangles, as you can see, or similar to triangles. These are not exactly triangles. So in one case, you have underestimate. So in this case, you have underestimate underestimate and in the other case you have overestimate okay over estimate so the actual area of this curve then will be somewhere in between so you could say let's say the area is a okay let's say the area is a so l4 is less than a is less than r4 because r4 overestimates l4 underestimates so the true area of the curve area under the curve is gonna be between l4 and r4 so that's that's a true statement now what we are gonna do we're gonna do the same kind of thing like the pizza slicing but uh uh, what we are going to do, we are going to make this delta x, these rectangles, okay, with delta x width become smaller and smaller, smaller in width. That means I'm going to reduce the width. And the way we find this delta x is pretty easy. If I want to create um, n different rectangles, it's going to be b minus a divided by n. That's going to be your delta x. It's pretty simple. Okay, now uh, before I go further, let me go ahead and introduce some notation that will help you. Who said that I have to have four of them, four rectangles? I could have any number of rectangles. So in general, I'm going to have L sub N left sum F of X naught plus times delta X plus F of X1 times delta X plus dot 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 plus F of x sub x sub n minus 1 times delta x similarly for the right side right sum uh, i'm gonna have f of x1 so note for the left sum i start at x naught or x sub 0 for the right one i started at, at x sub 1 so look this is the left left um, uh, height and this is the right height so for one case for the left summation i'm gonna start with the left height which is this for the right summation i'm gonna start with the right height which is this for the first uh, first rectangle and then the rest follows now having said that let me continue writing this. So it's going to be f of x sub 2 delta x plus dot 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 plus f of x sub n. Now this time instead of going up to n minus 1, this goes up to x sub n uh, and delta x. Now in mathematics, we tend to uh, write things in a compact way. Instead of writing this thing all the time, what we are going to do, we are going to write it L sub n as with a special notation is Greek letter sigma. This sigma represents summation. That means some of the things that's about to come in front of sigma. And uh, this sigma ranges i goes from 1 to n minus 1 um, f of x sub i times delta x. So this is literally telling you, this expression is telling you I am doing this summation there is nothing magical here this is just a compact way of doing it what i am doing taking the f of x sub i 
and multiplying it by delta x. That's it. Note on delta x there is no i, only on x sub i. Similarly, the right sum r sub n is going to be summation i is equal to 1 to this time it goes to up to n. I start at 1, go up to n and I start at uh, this one actually, sorry, I start at 0. Uh, I goes from 0 to n minus 1. So, uh, here I goes from 1 to n. Why 0? Because I start at f, sub, f of x sub 0. That's why. So now, this is going to be f of x sub i delta x. Just a compact notation. Nothing, nothing unusual. So please be familiar with these notations as it will help you. Now, if we let this ends, this n or this n uh, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what happens to these rectangles? These rectangles become smaller and smaller and smaller because if your n is bigger, this distance from b to a doesn't change. If n gets bigger, delta x gets smaller. So that means you might be getting smaller rectangles like this, half of it, okay, and uh, so on. Now, there is no limit to n. Basically, you can make your n as large as you want. In that case, what's going to happen to these delta x's? These delta x's are going to get extremely small, okay? Uh, as n approaches infinity, as n approaches infinity, delta x's approach zero, okay? The width of these triangles get arbitrarily close to zero. That is the limiting value. So if we want to find the area under the function or area under this f of x, right? We just need to make sure that we make these rectangles as small as we can. Then we will get better and better approximation for right sum and left sum. The way we got better approximation for the circle by making the pizza slices smaller and smaller and smaller. And in the limiting case, when the pizza slices are literally this arc length or this angle um, uh, that it forms with the uh, center becomes zero, this should represent the area inside the circle. In exactly the same way, if we let our n go towards infinity, then the limit that we get for r sub n or l sub n, they must be the same, okay? They will become the same. So in that case, the limit of, let's consider r sub n, limit n approaches infinity, r sub n, we are assuming that this limit exists, which is the same as limit n approaches infinity, summation i is equal to 1 to n f of x sub i delta x. If this limit exists, then we say that that would represent the area under the curve. As a matter of fact, it will represent the area under the curve or area under this function f of x, okay? Area under this function f of x. And we call it uh, a, that area. So that's how we define area under any arbitrary curve or any arbitrary function or any arbitrary shape. As a matter of fact, um, uh, you can think of it that way. Uh, say, for instance, if this is another function, if we want to find the area between them, we are going to do that. Let's say point A and B, we want to find this area. We are going to exactly slice it up in between A and B create smaller delta x's, okay, and let the delta x's go to zero by letting n go towards infinity, and then measure up or sum up all these small slices of rectangles. And in the limiting case, you will get that area under this function or in area under this arbitrary line. Now, this concept, by the way, of or this definition of finding area is extremely powerful in calculus, okay? 
the way you slice it up into smaller pieces and then sum up all these pieces is very very powerful and this leads to a new area of calculus is called integration okay uh, we have done differentiation now we are gonna delve into or uh, uh, explore into a different area of calculus it's called integration integration is all about finding area under the curve uh, or area under a function and the way we do it is by finding this uh, by following this method of slicing it into smaller pieces of rectangles and then adding up the areas of those rectangles. So remember this pizza example that will help you and then try to remember this diagram how in one case if you take the left sum you underestimate in right sum you overestimate the truth or the actual ground truth the area of the uh, area under the function would be somewhere in between the left and right uh, values but in the limiting case or left or right sum and in, in the limiting case when you let the delta x's go to zero the left sum and right sum becomes the same and you get the actual area under the function or actual area under the curve i hope that this discussion was helpful thank you very much